We had the, the staff meeting that first day, and they didn't know that uh, they had a pharmacist coming in, but then the leader of the camp announced that, well, now today we have a pharmacist, and everybody was just screaming and yelling, and I was surprised, you know, uh, but yeah, they were very, very happy to have a pharmacist, uh, you know, on the camp. So yeah, it was, uh, was a challenging experience, but it was, I was very, very happy with the outcome. It obviously was not organized. There was no system uh, at all. Uh, I, uh, I looked at the MSF guidelines and uh, I started from there. This is how I started building the pharmacy. Uh, building a pharmacy uh, uh, in the field is very much different from building a pharmacy in a hospital setting, let's say. Uh, so, um, so we started uh, dividing the medication per dosage form uh, in an alphabetical order. Um, we started building our shelves. We had to look in into every single packet, make sure that the expiration dates were fine and that the packet actually had medication <laughs> in it. And this is how we started. And that was only the beginning. Uh, this carpenter uh, had André, his name is André, he pretty much lost everything, you know, he had during the earthquake. Uh, he lost his wife, uh, he introduced his two daughters to me, he brought them to the pharmacy and they were in casts and, you know, they were, yeah, uh, very, you know, um, he was depressed because he always was telling me that he couldn't sleep at night because he lost his wife and he's traumatized. Um, he was working from 6 a.m. till 10 p.m. every night and he was um, he was very grateful that we were you know there trying to get this pharmacy you know to work and you know basically to you know to give drugs to um, to Haitian to Haitian um, patients so he was working nonstop from 6 a.m. till 10 p.m. every day he barely took any breaks um, he had lost his tools so even the tools he was using were borrowed uh, so we uh, requested um, for uh, from uh, Mike Sorensen to bring tools from the United States as a gift from us to him uh, it was his story was very inspiring and um, it, it definitely it he's somebody that I would never forget. Uh, we were actually the first pharmacy after the earthquake uh, in Haiti to start with. <laughs> Seriously, I can remember every minute of my stay. I I don't think I forgot. Uh, moments that I spent there on every single level. My connection with Haitians um, and um, what helped was uh, that the language barrier was not there. So I was able to connect with kids, with patients, with locals in general, and I did hire in the pharmacy um, locals to work. So I, I wanted to train people from there to take care of the pharmacy later. So, and also the connections with people you meet, international staff, um, whether from Europe, from South America, or from the United States. Um, these people would be, you know, probably my friends forever. I mean, we, you know, we connect now via email or by phone because we shared such an amazing experience and, you know, um, um, just going through, you know, uh, this tragedy, you know, to get and dealing with this tragedy, which is, you know, a bonding experience for the staff. Um, I would never forget Andre, who was, you know, the carpenter. Yeah. He would give me a hug every morning and a hug at night before he goes, you know, he, before he leaves the pharmacy. Um, so it was, a, you know, it was an amazing experience that I'll never forget. Yeah. And probably the most rewarding of my entire life. Really? Yeah. yeah. Huh. Any patients you remember? or Did you have much contact with patients? Or? I had a lot of contact with right. patients. And um, because I am a new mom, I connected the most with, with babies. And, you know, 
younger kids and specifically with uh, one girl her name is Jenica and I used to go check on her five or six times a day she lost her parents uh, in the earthquake and she, her 19 year old aunt was taking care of her uh, she had burns uh, and you know, we showed her uh, aunt how to uh, change her dressings, and I gave her antibiotics and food and clothing and all that stuff. And I, you know, I was checking on her, you know, many times a day. After a few days, you should see how, I mean, the changes. And I, I mean, I have the before and after pictures, and it was amazing how she just recovered. She was a happier baby, and and that was. Uh, I was pretty emotional, and I, you know, I felt that I made a difference right, you know, right there. I mean, sometimes it doesn't take much to make a difference, just a little, little things. Um, so yes, Jenica is one of the patients that I will never forget. Yeah. And you have a four-month-old at all? I do. Well, he's five now, but okay. yes, yeah. when I left, he was four months old, and uh, my biggest fear was, was that he would not, you know, he would not remember me when I get back, but that wasn't the case, <laughs> so I was very <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was very happy. He did remember me, and um, and I think my husband did a great job. So, um, um, so it wasn't, you know, uh, I I was relieved. Let's put it that way. When I got back home, I was relieved that he was just taken care of. He remembered me. He gained weight, which is <laughs> which is great. So. Was it hard to leave him behind? It was the hardest thing, probably. Yeah. Was the hardest thing. But, you know, if if I can help and if I think that, you know, people uh, need help, I never say no. And I was confident that my husband can, you know, take care of him. This is why I did it. Yeah. And your husband? You know, and I don't think anybody from the team took a shower for our stay. So, I, for me personally, I had to go through an intensive baby uh, wiping <laughs> session every night before I go to sleep, if I go to sleep. Um, so, it was very important <laughs> for me. <laughs> and crutches, I remember, and... and um sort of macaroni and cheese, somebody, I mean, the, the request I, for supplies I, yeah, included I some things that you wouldn't imagine. Before. I was going nuts from eating nuts all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> poor countries, um, uh, they, you know, they usually have, um, you know, they usually don't get vaccinated for measles, and the biggest fear, you know, when, in a disaster setting where you have so many people in you know, close in one area in a camp is a measles breakout because that would be detrimental for pe for patients and young kids who are malnourished to start with. Um, and we did vaccinate per, again, the UNICEF guidelines. Uh, so we did uh, six months to 59 months because we didn't have enough stock to just vaccinate everybody. Uh, because, you know, uh, Kids are more vulnerable, uh, obviously, to measles. How many people did you wind up vaccinating? Uh, between tetanus and measles, we did over 600. Yeah. When I first uh, thought about going, I had, you know, little concerns that I may maybe not make that huge of a difference I don't know uh, after I went through this experience I truly really feel that you know University of Chicago had made um, a huge difference uh, in Haiti and we've we were able to accomplish a lot in just an incredible short time frame and I'm really, really proud of what we have accomplished as a team and uh, as an organization.